The relationship among China, the United States, and Russia stands as one of the most crucial interplays among major powers in this new era. Every day, we gather various pieces of information about these three nations from various sources. The relationship between China and the United States has been continuously strained and escalated in recent years due to various reasons. Meanwhile, the relationship between China and Russia has been deepening. Recently, Ambassador Zhang Hanhui, the Chinese ambassador to Russia, shared his perspectives on the China-U.S.-Russia relationship during an interview, emphasizing the importance of cooperation, stability, and mutual interests. Ambassador Zhang Hanhui's viewpoint underscores the significance of the China-U.S. relationship and calls for a steady balance between cooperation and competition. This reflects China's recognition of the complexity of its relationship with the United States viewing them not as enemies but as partners with common interests. At the same time, the deepening China-Russia relationship demonstrates extensive cooperation between the two nations in political, economic, and military domains. China imports resources from Russia to meet its needs, providing economic support to Russia in return. On the political front, both China and Russia oppose U.S. hegemony, leading to the formation of a powerful alliance in international affairs. The close military exchanges indicate the tight collaboration between the two nations in the realm of security. Ambassador Zhang Hanhui pointed out that the cooperation between China and Russia is not driven by the aim to counter the United States, but rather to uphold their respective strategic interests and common progress. The collaboration between the two nations is expected to deepen in the future, but China's stance towards the United States will depend on U.S. actions. It must be acknowledged that the current relations among the three countries are closely intertwined with the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. I have noticed that the Russia-Ukraine war has caused huge turmoil in the Chinese public opinion field, and the hostility in the mutual accusations among netizens is so strong that it seems that China is at the war. But how much real knowledge can people gain with the cost of so much time and effort? Okay, I just want to say that everyone has their own position, and it is also the norm in the public opinion field to make various statements. But it still needs consensus behind the noise, for example, to speak with facts, the facts must be accurate and comprehensive, and the voices of all parties must be heard. You can debate opinions that are different from your own, but you can't use insults, abuse, and rumors. If such basic rules are adhered to, there will be more truths in the social platforms. Otherwise, there is only one winner in the field of public opinion, and that is emotion. In today's video, I would like to review the history with you, and to see the evolution of the historical relationship between China, the United States, and the Soviet Union, and then to inspire today's problems behind many voices. Okay, let's get more details about that. A looming and lingering theme in the Russia-Ukraine debate is the relationship between China, the United States and Russia. This is a major historical and practical issue that runs through modern and contemporary times, and is also related to China's future. Looking back on history, the relationship between China, the Soviet Union, and Russia, which inherited the Soviet Union's international influence, and the United States is full of complexity and variability. But in general, it is impossible for the three countries to be antagonistic to each other for a long time, and they must find a way to get along in constructive interaction. First, let's talk about Sino-Soviet relations. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, China learned the path of socialist construction from the Soviet Union, setting off a climax of learning from the Soviet Union throughout the country. At the same time, in terms of diplomacy, China pursued a one-sided foreign policy, that is, swing to the side of the socialist camp headed by the Soviet Union. Moreover, the Soviet Union's aid to China has contributed a lot to China's industrialization. In 1958, the Soviet Union proposed to establish a long-wave radio station and a common fleet jointly managed by China and the Soviet Union on Chinese territory in Territorial Sea, but China firmly rejected it. Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China, later said, 
China fell out with the Soviet Union actually happened in 1958. They wanted to control China militarily, but we refused. Since then, Sino-Soviet relations have gradually deteriorated. In 1968, Brezhnev launched the limited sovereignty theory, proposing that the interests of the socialist family are higher than the interests of the country, and in essence, it gave the Soviet Union the power to interfere in the sovereignty of other socialist countries. China resolutely fought back, and the Soviet Union put more pressure on China. In 1969, the Sino-Soviet border broke out the Xinbao Island self-defense counterattack and the xinjiang taiyelekti battle. The two sides were incompatible as fire and water. The Soviet Union had deployed a million troops on the Sino-Soviet border, and Brezhnev even wanted to carry out a surgical nuclear strike against China. After entering the 1980s, China implemented the reform and opening up policy and made great progress. China also began to strive for a major improvement in Sino-Soviet relations, and Sino-Soviet relations were normalized in 1989. But, the Soviet Union disintegrated in 1991. In recent years, especially after 2017, many U.S. strategic reports have regarded China and Russia as the main security threats and global strategic opponents of the United States. Therefore, China and Russia have become more and more close in establishing a comprehensive strategic partnership of coordination, and have entered a new stage of partnering with Russia. Let's talk about China-US relations, which is actually a complex of multiple emotions in different historical periods. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, China and the United States first confronted each other. The United States did not recognize the People's Republic of China. China responded with a squeezing out countermeasure, that is, expropriating American barracks and supplies in China, and crowding out diplomats in China. After the war to resist U.S. aggression and aid Korea, Sino-U.S. relations deteriorated for a while. Then there is the long-term isolation between China and the United States, but there are also certain communication channels in the isolation. During the 129th meeting in March 1966, the U.S. Ambassador Gronowski used the term, People's Republic of China, in his speech, which was the first time the U.S. side used this specific term since the Sino-U.S. ambassadorial talks. The period from the late 1960s to 1976 was a relationship of closeness between China and the United States. On February 28, 1972, China and the U.S. officially issued the Sino-U.S. joint communique in Shanghai, pointing out that the normalization of Sino-U.S. relations is in the interests of all countries. The so-called strategic triangle between China, the United States and the Soviet Union originated from the study of the international situation and strategic issues conducted by the four marshals of the Communist Party in February 1969 at the request of Mao Zedong. They analyzed the contradictions between the three major forces and believed that in the Sino-U.S.-Soviet big triangle relationship, the Sino-Soviet contradiction was greater than the Sino-U.S. contradiction the U.S.-Soviet contradiction was greater than the Sino-Soviet contradiction, and both the United States and the Soviet Union were eager to play China card. So China is in a strategically active position. Based on this, a relatively unanimous understanding has been formed within the CCP, to maintain China's national security, we must firmly build up a line against the expansion of Soviet hegemonism, to achieve modernization, we must carry out reform and opening up, and we must improve cooperation with the United States and other developed countries. Following such a big logic, it is not difficult to understand that China has established diplomatic relations with the United States and has always insisted on opening up, joining the WTO, and so on. However, under the unprecedented change in a century, the formulation of the Sino-US-Soviet triangle in the 1970s is very inaccurate today, and China has not had such a formulation for many years. But looking back on history, one can clearly appreciate what China has learned from countless challenging practices, the importance of an independent foreign policy of peace. Reading history makes one wise. The pendulum of history shows us that the relationship between major powers is full of games based on national positions, and as the power grows, the game will be constantly updated. The relationship between China, 
the United States and Russia is not an equilateral relationship. Under certain historical conditions, the distance between two points may sometimes be a little closer, but in the long run, multilateral equilibrium is the trend. This includes the balance of relations between China and the United States, the balance of relations between China and Russia, and the balance of relations between Russia and the United States. And from a historical point of view, no matter how big the contradiction is, it is not irreconcilable, as long as there is a bigger view of the overall situation and the future, and the well-being of the common people is in mind. The Ukrainian crisis is fundamentally related to the tussle between Russia and the US, and there may be various tussles in the future. The reason why China promotes peace first and calmly expresses its position is to prevent the escalation of the conflict and bring the world into a more unpredictable situation. China's culture is different from that of the United States and Russia. It is essentially a culture that emphasizes harmony, balance, and neutrality. It does not promote force or hegemony. So, that dualistic model is not and should not be China's choice. The title of today's video is, Gain New Insights by Reviewing Old, which is a famous saying of Confucius. This video tries to sort out some of the history of the strategic triangle between China, the United States and the Soviet Union, hoping to learn from history and let history enlighten us about what kind of future should be created. Okay, that's all for today. How do you think about it? Please put your comments or suggestions in the comments below, and share your thoughts about today's topic, we will see you in the next video. Goodbye.